Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe, which we're playing as a Western Russian Regency. As you can see on screen, we have a focus, or not a focus, but an event to go through and to select a new focus, which I suppose we can do and then get into comments pretty much immediately. We shall do the sins of the past. The intellectual class has never been worthy of the Empire's trust. It is from academia, not the peasantry, that corruptive ideas of equality, Bolshevism, and capitalism emerged. They are a perpetual fifth column, a thorn in the side of Russia spreading a vile infection no longer. The only rational and moral solution is a nationwide purge of these dissidents. Anyone who cannot prove that he is with us is in totality is against us, and the region has no mercy for the enemies of God. Once they have received their justice, a new intellectual order shall be founded on their bones, an order dedicated to true science, purified of demonic materialism. So, the first comment is, from yesterday, someone recommends that I play as Hyperborea. And, like I said, with everything else, I will eventually. I really will. So... Um, yeah, I will eventually. I do have plans for playing a lot of other Russian nations in mind, but time is scarce, and I don't want to oversaturate my channel with too much TNO daily. Next up, another comment was, someone said, it sounds like the region is cracking and going a little crazy. Oh, he is, and we love it. Let's see. I'm gonna, there's a comment from the last video as well, where I should get more weekly manpower, so I was recommended I do that. Sure, why not? Let's do, go ahead and do that. And I believe there was one more comment... But now I can't remember. Oh yeah, no, it is. The clock works. Apparently, I, for some reason, I thought the clock only went to 12th hour, to the number 12 instead of 24. So, we'll see what happens. The wrong kind of question, though. <clears throat> Mr. Makov. Makov looked up from his worksheets he was marking. Seeing young Nikolai standing before him, the rest of the students had filed out quickly, leaving him behind. Many had worked to get to after school. Yes, Nikolai, he replied, smiling. It was always a pleasure to speak with such a bright young boy. Mr. Makov, sir, I have a question about the Bible. The teacher folded his hands together on his desk. Well, Father Carroll might know more about that than me. I only know what I was taught myself at your age, so I'll try to give you a good answer. Nikolai looked altogether too curious. Mr. Markov, if the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, why do the soldiers do it all the time? Markov blanched and took a moment to compose himself. Nikolai, uh, that's a difficult question. Not to mention a little unfair, don't you think? He shook his head. No, Mr. Markov, I saw soldiers shoot old Mr. Androv from down the street yesterday. I know soldiers kill people in wars, but he wasn't in a war. He was just an old man who liked old, uh... Party music, he called it. Markov paused, then placed a hand on Nikolai's shoulder. Nikolai Mikhailovich, the truth is that there are some questions you shouldn't ask. It's a good thing you only asked me because, oh, I asked a soldier outside the school too, but he didn't answer me. <laughs> Just looked at me funny and asked my name. I told him, but he didn't want me to, didn't want to tell me. <laughs> oh no, no! Markov's heart sank, and he patted Nikolai on the head before dismissing the boy. He felt sick and tried to bite back the tears, but welling in his eyes, too curious indeed. Oh, academic base is rapidly going to decline. Oh crap. Um. Well, that's not good. I'm um, currently we're on five, so by really fast, it goes down by three. Wow. I'm glad I built it up earlier. So, basically, regarding your situation right now, hmm. All right, so we've got 18. I have reordered these, so I have four divisions against these guys. I'm gonna pull off four, one. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh man, I don't want to do it like this, but I think we're gonna to have to. I'm actually gonna make a fallback line right here. Because their lines do not extend all the way up this way. We will stop right here. So I'll be honest here. I tabbed over to see the Euro Mil Okay, game. Here's the one. Uh, the Euro military district. Just to see how strong they were, because we saw some pretty strong divisions down here. Look at this like infantry division. A lot of the divisions are actually 40 combat width. Our guys are only 20 combat with. Now, we could make them 40 combat with, which is not a bad idea. But, at least to me, it seems like we are running out of time with this clock stuff, which I, we're not yet, obviously. But, I should we, we should probably get that done, get stuff done as fast as possible. So, you know what? Maybe I will convert some of these guys to 40 combat with infantry. Just to match them, because they already have 40 combat with. So... We might as well match them, right? I'm going to go select half of you guys first, though, to become 40 combat with. Because we don't have the supplies for them. So. We are out of all this extra stuff now. Which is not good, but better industrial expertise. Good. New training programs motivated, motivated by a need for better workers and managers has resulted in industrial workplaces that are more exact, efficient, and smart in the production of goods. New technologies and equipment are important, but they never stump or trump the human element, which is driven by practice and education. These new training programs, motivated by national vocational programs and investments in worker safety programs, have driven our workers towards full, true, perfect industrial efficiency. When they clock in, they'll become machine, machines of the highest order. That is the goal. More artillery? Not bad. 
It is 68, so we gotta keep that in mind. Get even more artillery attack. Soft attack. And I do want to launch an invasion program, so... This is not going to be good, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully we have enough Korean conspiracy. Perhaps it might be true. Ooh. Planes. Early fighters, early casts. We got hopefully enough fighters we can do this. Oh yeah, we were training some, weren't we? Yeah, we are. That's nice. There we go. We're not quite done, but that's okay. And actually, I'm going to throw on the cast already. It's only going to be 100. That's alright. That is okay. And I'll put you with these guys first. Just because I want you to strike these guys down as hard as possible. Cool. This is probably a bad idea. Probably launch military invention. Opponent influence is pretty high. Screw it. We're going to go in. These guys are not going to be easy to take out. Support weapons for... Go and get even more soft, soft attack and defense. That'll be good. Oh, look. Those guys aren't too bad. So we gotta rush through here, and we gotta rush through here, and then rush through here. The assassination of Albert Speer and insult to America. Oh boy. Oh boy. But I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm during these frigid, frigid times. 1.62 political power a day, not bad. Yes, struck the fifth hour, initiate propaganda campaigns. Well, we don't really need that. Well, we could get more war support, though. That would not be bad, actually. We've gotta save it up. Save it up for now. The sins of the past. No law for the regents. Army professionalism, professionalism will slightly worsen. More division attack, which would be good. Fill the Imperial Treasury. Tear down the failures. Industrial equipment. How bad is industrial equipment right now? Well, it is at 6, so we can kind of do that for now, so. Tear down their failures. Nowhere is the degeneracy and failure of Bolshevism more apparent than in its architecture and history. Hideous concrete edifices. Shrines to their humanity. Little Russia's idyllic lands. What use is any of this? If it fails to adequate, adequately glorify Russia and its god. There's no other option. It all has to go. It must be torn down and pulverized to dust with hammers, saws, dynamite, even artillery if necessary. The Lord will never bless our ec economic endeavors if we permit red blasphemy to continue existing in any form. The sooner we carry out the, this cleansing, the more certain we can be of its favor. It'll hurt current economic growth, but that's okay. Going nowhere. Nestor was jolted awake as a truck he was riding in drove over a pothole. He was lying on the floor of the flatbed. The back of his head, somewhere, someone had struck him with a blunt object, was damp and sticky. Around him, seated in handcuffs, were people he didn't know. They were both men and women, most of the middle age or older. They were all dressed well. Fellow intellectuals, maybe. Hey, what's going on? He asked nobody in particular. Where are we going? Where do you think? Asked an elderly woman, peering down at him through half-moon spectacles. She was sporting a nasty bruise on her forehead and had a split lip. Nestor noticed that one of the lenses and glasses was missing. We're all teachers, said a young man sitting ne just next to him, which means you must be too. We're all from the same school, but I don't recognize you. Nestor's heart sank as the pieces began to come together. I'm head of the literature department at Stichtivkar University. Bloody hell, sighed an old man with a long white beard. Nestor noticed after a moment that he was wearing a priest's robe. I'm sorry, my son. We're in the back of a Sturm... Sturmoviki truck headed out into the countryside. Tabriski has come for the teachers now. Nestor sat back against the cold meadow of the flatbed, ignoring the pain in his skull. Of course it had finally happened. Teachers imparted knowledge, and knowledge was power in this new, hellish vision of Russia. There was room for only one man with power in the Holy Russian Empire. A thinking man is a dangerous one indeed. Industrial expertise goes down now. Oh, crap. I'm really glad I boosted all the stuff up early on. Because, holy crud. And we just, we just got industrial expertise done, too. At least we don't get any penalties, and hopefully we can get down to there eventually, but, hmm, I don't know. Let's hope so. Alright, so we got a couple days before we need to go ahead. And we're kind of worried that I made these guys 40 combo with now, and we don't have enough guns. Military austerity, that's fine. We're not going to slash the budget anymore, because, well, frankly, we need all the extra output. Which, actually, if you slash the military budget, it does lower your output, so I'm not going to do that. We could spend more, but I don't want to spend any more right now. Serbia sides with Italy. Check. Germany. And we're making more military factories, which is a very good thing for us right now. Go and do that. Make enough of that. The Iberian Divorce. Pi. Or P-E. Pi. It wasn't meant to be. Oh, how sad. Spain. Formation of the Sock Intern. Return of the Reds. Ooh. Oh, boy. Headquarters in the far eastern Soviet Republic. Or, you know, Soviet Republic. More income rate, the clock speeds up, confiscation economy, imperial corporations. 
more fascism, state-controlled unions, less stability, less production cap, more factory output, which we could use. So, predictably, the remnants of the Bolshevik economy we inherited are nothing short of pathetic. Their obsession with ensuring adherence to their mad ideology only impoverished the people of Russia and made them easy prey for the Germans. Little better were their limited attempts at capitalism in a red guise. Any man of God knows that capitalists are a threat to the proper hierarchy of a godly society. With the region's guidance, such pitfalls will be avoided. State controls... Total state control is necessary, but turning God's people against one another will achieve little. Let the nobles have the riches as they deserve, and remind the common folk of the shared duty of the classes. Let red commissariats and liberal free enterprise give way to the good sense and responsibility of the imperial chartered corporations. That is how it always should have been. Oh man, I can just hear the debt just like, spiking now. Oh no. Consider our destiny. Oh, we'll do that one once we um, speed the clock up some more. So we're not doing that yet, though. Arms trading, going lower that one. Propaganda campaigns would be nice, but... Uh, well, you know what? Let's get the war, more war support. Why not? We have enough stability, but I prefer more war support for now. Get as many guns as you possibly can into the arms of our soldiers. Heavy SP artillery, huh? Come on, how many more days? Better army professionalism, yes sir! Those two words seem to be the ultimate lesson in the history of military theory. It is not the quality of guns or weaponry that make an army, but discipline. Those men that hold until the death become a, because of a command will be the ones to claim victory. In a world of absolute war, of brave new weaponry, it seems that we often forget the simple fact. An army cannot function without those two words, luckily. Anti-corruption programs in the army and new boot camps have brought our army one, class, one step closer to the ultimate goal of Spartanic Valor. No longer will our men defect or serve political masters. They will serve the generals and nothing else. Nothing less. Excellent. Great. We get more attack, recovery rate. We lose some political power, but whatever. We get more planning and less intelligence to others. Great. We get political interference. So we went from widespread cronyism to political interference, which was better. But we need to get a professional army next. I really want helicopters. Holy crap, 400 days. Um, it might... Oh, hold on, is that, is that the same for everything? Because we got a 0.85 modifier. How about down here? If I did like this, that's 100 days. No. No, artillery armor. What if I did this? 150 days. I, th uh, I want to use helicopters, but... Hmm. Let's grab some more recon first. Because even this is affected by 0.85, so... Oh, maybe we won't be able to use helicopters. So, we will... I will use them again sometime, though. H higher and forward structures, yeah. Definitely do that one. Even more army professionalism. Because we get still 3.25 a month. That's not bad. Real corporations, the riches of the earth. So, beneath the soil of Russia lies more mineral wealth than we could ever find use for. The Bolsheviks never exploited this properly. The Lord saw their degenerate atheism and concealed the greatest of the creation's riches from their crude machines. However, the land is now worked by God's chosen people. We have thus found no shortage of vital resources such as tungsten, al alumin aluminum, or aluminum, and iron. These material blessings must be unearthed as quickly and efficiently as possible. Thankfully, we have no shortage of strong backs to carry the task out, as well as subhuman fodder for the riskiest work. Only with the mines and pits stripped bare can the region see its holy mission fulfilled. The infrastructure, building slots, and more resources, the riches of the earth. Hopefully that doesn't hurt anything, but, uh, cool. Tomorrow altogether. The recent changes in management certainly provided interesting times for the workers of Cheboksari Brickworks. Shortly after the establishment of, tap of the Regency, the owner, a grouchy old Tartar who had been granted to it by the defunct Tartar Republic, had vanished. He was not missed by his predominantly Russian workforce, who had never been paid as much as the Tartars in, other in his other factories. Perhaps the authoritarianism of the region wasn't such a terrible thing if they could put more food on the table. Then the pay cuts came. The workers came to a new state appointed manager to complain, and they were heard out. He promised change that their interests would be taken into consideration. That was more than the old boss had ever granted them. Grousing but satisfied, they had returned to work. The next thing, the next day, things were indeed quite different. The two men who had organized them were gone, and there were six armed guards in the factory. The boss had addressed them in the morning, informing them that it was now a fixed quota, and that failing to meet it would have some consequences. And it... Anna totally disregarded the warning to work at his usual pace, humming all the while. At the end of the day, with only a third of his quota met, he was dragged outside and beaten, shot through the head by one of the guards, along with two men who had worked alongside him. The guard charge for them, of course, was failing to monitor a co-worker correctly. The next day, there were three fresh races in Cheboksari Brickworks, and no one failed to meet the quota. Godly labor strengthens the soul. Oh, crap. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't miss your quotas. Still the fifth hour, which is totally fine. Okay, so how long is this going to take? Okay, so military intervention. Okay, in two days we will go to war. Which is fine with Ural and Orenburg. Ural League and Orenburg, which is fine with me. So we got to move quickly through here. Which I think will do fine, especially if we force the attack. You guys go there, but then go straight to Orenburg. And maybe Orsk. And they declare war with us. 
which is what I thought they would what would they would do, but which is fine. Are we at war with these guys? Yes, we are. Which is fine with me. So I'm gonna have you guys attack here. Uh, actually, you know, we'll just walk in. If you don't have to attack, don't have to. Don't wanna waste lives. All right, well, those guys are gone. And the soft little underbelly will be ours as well. Okay, we took the capital. Go right there if you can. All right, and they're gone too. Beautiful. That was pretty easy, but that's what I kind of expected. Cool. Can we actually win against them, maybe? Organization? Adaptable, yes. Good adaptable. That's good. That's very good stuff. Alright, so we're winning so far. I'm loving it. A little bit of lag. Alright, uh, well, might as well integrate these areas, right? Let's, let's integrate the areas that are far further away from the front line. And then I do that one, so. Eh. And that should actually help out our GDP, right? 9.91 billion in terms of debt every year. Or more deficit. Ceasefire proposed. Our rebels sent a diplomatic communique proposing a ceasefire to an end to the war over the fate of the Southern Urals. <clears throat> the nations that once ruled the region have been conquered and absorbed during the fighting. As the war continues and casualties continue to rise, neither side has been able to gain the upper hand. The proposed ceasefire will, would halt hostilities indefinitely and divide the Southern Urals evenly between East and West. A ceasefire will give both of our states a chance to recover and lick our wounds. For both sides, it will offer a chance to integrate their new territories and prepare for a resumption of hostilities, but calling out the fighting now may cost either side the initiative later. We must decide if we will accept these terms or continue fighting until a total victory or defeat. Pfft, hell no. Are you kidding me? You guys have, might have 40 combat with divisions. But we have spirit. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully spirit means something. Go and do that. Can we get some radar here? Eh... It might not help that much by the time we build it, so. Just get to the line. Go and move in. Oh! We actually got in. Nice. Can they pierce us? Somewhat. They can somewhat pierce us. Which kind of sucks. Oh, man. They are really cracking down on me. But they lost a lot of guys there. Holy cow. Oh, they're attacking us as well. So be it. So be it. Oh, you actually lost as well. Oh, crap. Well, maybe we should have had a piece. Well, so be it. Let's see what we can do. Once we get some airplanes around here, we'll be fine, probably. Which is of the Earth. Cool. Base bleed. And confiscation economy. Ooh, boy. There are many in Russia who never, deser who never deserve to be wealthy. Scheming Jews who piled the wicked trade of money lending. Step-dwelling step barbarians who pillaged our homes. Uppity peasants who forgot their place in society. These parasites and any other of their like will no longer be permitted to hoard their ill-gotten gains while the empire is left wanting. Their property is now God's and therefore the region's. It shall finally be put to good use, fueling the reconstruction of a pure holy Russia while the thieves and helps of humans of the world do their penance in mines and factories. How bad is their GDP growth? 5.9. We're actually doing better than earlier. Okay. Sure, why not? The riches of the earth. <clears throat> Muhammad's world was one of pitch darkness, save for the feeble glow of lanterns spaced throughout the tunnels. His sense of time was rapidly eroded in the underground world he had been co consigned to. There were, no longer, there were no longer hours, days, and weeks in the mines under the Ural foothills, only work and sleep. There was no breakfast, lunch, and dinner, only scraps of bread snatched from a pile left in the quarters every morning, and sips of water from the old cold stream that ran parallel to the mine shaft. There was no time for daily prayers, no comfort of a bed, no warmth of a fire. In the best of time in which he and the other slaves resided, there was only the banging of picks on the walls, the rattling of mine carts filled with coal being pushed uphill, and the coughing of men with lungs full of coal dust. The only mercy for those who afflicted was death, delivered by one <clears throat> delivered by one of the masked guards when he could work no more. Mohammed endured for longer than most. He wrapped a rag around his face, hammered away at the coal seams, and continued to work despite the withering of his muscles and his fading sight. But eventually he too collapsed, coughing black phlegm and completely blind. When the blade of mercy slid across his jugular, his last thoughts were a prayer to Allah and gratitude that suffering that was finally at an end. The darkness becomes us. Ooh, the debt and GDP, GDP does gr Go up, so ten billion, huh? Not ideal. And we don't have our bonuses here yet, so we can't do that. Yep, can we do that one? No, it's probably not a good idea. If we get one of these, we have to start making it for our soldiers. So probably RPG and to take equipment too, because we'll save this one for later. Oh boy, now they're really attacking us, huh? All right, well, then I'm going to attack you here. To hell with you guys. To hell with you guys as well. Or defend as best as you can. And we will attack you with my tanks. 
Oh boy, they are really suffering down here. Did we not? We, we did win over there, that's good. Oh man, they are really suffering. Holy crap. Oh, don't lose them. Oh man. We might actually lose those soldiers. My bad. Oh well. More infantry equipment. What else? Not bad, not bad. You know what? Force attack here then. You guys might be able to win actually here. Good. Yeah, we're probably going to lose those divisions. Pull out then. So be it. Well, at least, we did, at least they didn't die. We lost 18,000. They've lost 33,000. Obviously not enough. Now, you're going to attack here. And you should be able to win pretty easy. Yes, kill them off. Kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. Kill them. Yeah, nope. Nope. Can you guys actually win here? Yes, you can. Nice. Do we have air superiority? We don't. Oh, we do that down here, though. That's kind of nice. Yeah, no. You're going to go straight back to there. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Like that, so be it. Any upgrades yet? Nope, that's fine. It's definitely going to be a, a di more difficult war than I expected early on, but whatever. Oh, we just scored some areas. Awesome, 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 awesome. Oh, actually, we're only missing... Oh, we capitulated so many guys, we got more equipment there. Nice. Plenty of planes, for now. <clears throat> Alright. Coffee's pretty good, though. Oh, we lost? Are you kidding me? No. No, 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 no. <clears throat> oh, man. Come on, kick him out. Beat him up. Beat the living snot. Oh, Oh, it wasn't 23, it was 23,000, not 33,000. Okay, that's that's much better, actually. Oh boy, they're attacking. They are definitely attacking. You know what, I'd rather attack here. Can you guys actually come down here and do this? They want to beat up that line here. Oh, so be it. You guys hold. You might be able to win. Get up here if you can, maybe. You know what, both of you are going to do this. And do that, there you go. Just support the attack. There you go. Confiscation economy. Cool. Honorable honor in a humble life. A return to tradition. Poverty rate will go down. <clears throat> the love of money is the root of all evil. What does a peasant or laborer have for gold, jewels, and fine silks? Why does he need a fine town house with gilded furniture and a necklace of pearls for his humble wife? What are they of any use in these scenes of eternal damnation? All the common man needs is provided for him already by the Lord, who created the proper and sanctified order of things, hard work, prayer, family, absolute faith in God and the Tsar. These things were given unto him by heaven, and they are not his to reject. This is the rightful lot of all the common folk, and the regent will see his divine order maintained at any cost. Oh god, how much more money? Oh yeah, it's not bad. I get more money, but... Hey, that helps us for money. Hey, things are looking great. Just trust in the Tsar, and you might do okay. Alright, so, we've got all 45,000 into them. They still have plenty of divisions, and they still have 31, so this is still no one's victory yet. <clears throat> Both head down here. Oh boy. Yeah, keep attacking me, guys. <clears throat> my apologies, just like that last video. My voice is never good to record, for some reason, for TNL. Maybe it's the region getting to me. Maybe I'm not a strong enough believer yet. Maybe. Just maybe. Good. Crush them. And then they're going to try to crush us. Again. Which is not good. And they're crushing us over there. Okay, well, I'm going to crush you right here then. Let's see what happens about that. Oh, can you not get over there? That's fine. Can you guys get over here? There you go. Uh, who, who's coming down? No, you, you, you kind of hang out. There you go. There you go. There you go, that's nice. You guys should be able to do this too then. Especially with support from here. We're slowly winning. At least in my mind we are. Can we actually hold here, please, finally? Mmm, they're attacking us right there pretty harshly, but that's okay. Oh, they're attacking us right there pretty harshly. You know what, so be it. You hold, these other guys will move in. We got off so many men. Holy crap. <clears throat> very good, very good. Crush them, crush them, crush them. Awesome. Honor in a humble life. 
But by doing this, I know this is pretty painful for us, but we'll basically be halfway through conquering Russia, so a grand industrial project. We are a pious as ascetic nation. I have no need of mass-produced trinkets and baubles to keep the plebeian folk amused. Thus, all the space that would be occupied by light industry and selfish capitalist ventures remains free, free specifically for the enormous amounts of heavy industry that we require to make Russia great again. <coughs> Arms factories, chemical plants, oil refineries, foundries, and quarries are all needed to ignite the fires of industry. All of it, from the smallest operation to the grandest factory complex, will be directed solely towards the forging the greatest army Russia has ever seen, until the Tsarevich reigns supreme over a godly and peaceful land. Nothing else is worthy of our efforts. Equipment will rapidly improve. More building slots, we lose stability. A grand industry. Cool. Can't wait. Regional development. Ooh, yeah, we want to do this one. Uh, where's the clockwork? Oh, here it is. Still at the fifth hour? Not bad. Proposed neutral ceasefire? Hell no. Oh, their tanks are not looking good too. A return to tradition, a return to monk. What did the Russian worker truly need? A radio? Comfortable furniture? A car maybe? Perhaps some small pieces of jewelry for his lovely wife and books for the pleasure of reading. I'll throw you guys over here, actually. Perhaps that was so according to the degenerate liberal tradition, but not to the Russian values. No, the Russian needed only food to survive, a simple bed upon which to sleep, and his own two feet to keep him moving. He didn't need high wages, which would only be wasted on friv frivolities. Radio and television? He could go to the public square and hear the regional announcements there. Books? What did it... What use did a worker have for pointless works of fiction and deviant art? The Russian workers could, would, would complain, no doubt, crying out for the luxuries upon which they had become dependent. It was never going to be easy to wean them off such things and convince them to accept an austere lifestyle. It was going to be even harder to convince the region's supporters who had expected just rewards for the service. But what were these things? Small, trivial things next to the purity of tradition and a worry-free, godly life. Modernity was a mistake. Hmm. Maybe it is. Maybe it's all for naught. That's... Just beat the living hell out of them. Oh, journal entry, nice. He revealeth deep and hidden things, and knoweth what is in darkness, and light is with him. Daniel 2, 22. Months has passed since the rebirth of the Empire, and yet, still the blessed Savage remains hidden. The doubters, those forked tongue deceivers, have grown in number. They think now to betray me. They think I am ignorant of what happens in the dark corners of taverns, in their homes, in the deep woods. Confronted with their misdeeds, they say, Your eminence, you are mistaken. We are, all of us, loyal and pious men. Your word is law, and we shall not disobey. It saddens me deeply to see men I once thought honorable and trustworthy led astray. Even in victory, one feels defeated. How am I to carry out my task, when even those sent to aid me are seduced by the Prince of Lies? This too... Some manner of test, am I? Yes. Damnation, but I have been a blind fool. How could I ever have thought otherwise? The Lord tests us constantly, does he not? Is that not his right as creator of all? Do we sinful and weak-spirited mortals deserve anything less than constant scrutiny? Of course not. God watches us, always judging, always testing our faith. Perhaps this is a sign. One that I've been too blind to see, but no longer. I will ensure there is nothing beyond my sight, nothing beyond my knowledge. There is no better example to follow than God's. And I, too, will judge and have a good time. In the process. Lay down some heavy firepower. I can't imagine the Ural district is going to be able to keep this up. They've lost so many guys to Grand Russian Army. They're completely out of manpower. We could just waste lives and equipment right now and just attack, 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 but we're not going to be crazy like that. We'll be crazy some other time doing that, but let's continue be browbeating them until uh, morale improves. So, good. Very good, very good, very good. You guys attack here. You guys support the attack, and then you guys also support the attack. Uh, you two support the attack. Good. Zoss army plant captured. Our defeat in the plains of southern Russia cost us a control over the Zoss arms plant, a mighty monumental tool in the wars against our bandit neighbors. Wait, we lost this? Wait, what? The factory that had reliably constructed and manufactured arms for our men now sits under the control of our adversaries, and to give them enough time before it was taken back, they will begin to use the great instrument of war against us. Surviving the German invasion and much of the Russian anarchy, the plant is a symbol of warring resilience in the face of brutal conflict and is now pointed against us? Land dispute and skirmishes plague the side of Russia, and there is no telling of our fate and future conflicts without the factory. However, what is known is that this is a noteworthy defeat and perhaps the beginning of our end. Our decrease in material production will inevitably lead to shortages down the line, and with our forces used of modern production technology, this could spell our undoing. Death does not approach today and does not may not tomorrow, but with less and less weapons to defend ourselves, we must be cautious of a time where we are unarmed and alone in the brutality of this war. Count your bullets and keep hold of your gun. Um... We just got that. Oh, okay, so technically we will lose that, just because we our soldiers were currently defeated. Whatever. Whatever. Did you guys actually win here? Oh, good. Beat them up. Beat the living snot out of them. And you guys can help beat them up here, too. Beat up their light infantry, or I guess really light militia units. So we're moving in over here, which would be great. Good. You guys immediately move in here, and use you guys to help out. 
Yeah, they're looking extremely weak in some of these areas. Ceasefire propose? Absurd. No. No. A thousand times no. An infinite no. Oh, we've got Latal still, so. Yep, no peace for these guys. How much are we lacking? We're doing really well in infantry equipment now. Wow. Really, really well. So well that I'll go down by two s more. Even more tanks. Good. At this point, I just want to say just force the attack. You know what? Entire line, force the attack. They can't keep up the losses. Infantry, this is going to be painful, but just go to town on these guys. A grand industrial project. Build on the ruins? Yes, yes, yes. With only dust and ashes remaining in the Bolsheviks' buildings, we can now begin to construct simpler, more fitting replacements. These new buildings will be designed from the most basic level to glorify God, Russia, and the Tsarevich. All other concerns are secondary. Whether new factories and facilities appear safe or practical is to the scaled eyes of heretics and traitors is irrelevant. The region speaks with God's own voice and he assures that the people that they so, so long as they have faith in him, they need never fear the dangers that blight the industry of lesser nations. If a man loses his arm in a thresher or is cooked alive in a blast of steam, he only has himself to blame for the lacking sufficient faith in God's protection. God will protect us. A grand industry across western Russia. The soil churns, stone shattered, and great pillars of concrete rose. The inefficient and obsolete industrial edifices of Bolshevism were being torn down and replaced with something newer, better, and more pure of purpose. Homes of the undeserving too were raised flat, and their occupants cast out or consigned to penance through labor. In their place, new factories and offices were erected, manifestations of the efficient and pitiless state that now rule the Russian heartlands. The thunder of dynamite in the hills and the mountains signaled the birth of hundreds of new mines and quarries. Soon, the tunnels would open up and tracks would be laid for carts. Cutting-edge industrial machines would be would move into support the masses of degenerates, failed, fated to work themselves to death in the oppressive darkness. The forges of Russia would be fueled with subhuman souls. Regent Temporeski smiled as he envisioned it. No more wasteful consumerism. No more time wasted glorifying Lenin and his Jewish cohorts. It was uh, over a century overdue, but Russia would finally have its rightful wealth. Better late than never. Beautiful. And we are still at the sixth hour. Slowly slipping forwards. The rays of dawn fall upon a new age. Beautiful. 0.5.48. Ural automated plant captured. Great, great, great. With Chelyabinsk now conquered, a man sweep through the city in search of anything of value in the ongoing conflict with their neighbors. Raiding teams zip across streets, firing at the remnants of enemy divisions, holding out in homes and buildings scattered across the urban sprawl, and crackles of gunfire echo throughout the streets of a skirmishes a few blocks away. A unit of men had been besieged, or had besieged, an encampment holding out in the Ural automated plant, and upon breaching enemy defenses, the plant was pried from the few dozen men left clinging to their lives. And with this major manufacturing set under our control, our soldiers will have now greater access to off-road vehicles and later confrontations. This has had great potential to improve our supply lines and aid in improving the speed of our reinforcements. The powerful engines produced in the real automotive plant are renowned for their speed and dexterity over difficult terrain, and will definitely prove useful in our navigational and incursive efforts across the Russian anarchy. Truly, the, with the aid of the motor, this is the victory for, of our people and the future of Russia. Onwards, countrymen. Great! Even more factory output just in general. Great, great. We need more tanks, of course, and anti-tank equipment. Oh, my goodness. We're going to go quite aggressive with anti-tank uh, production right now. Let's go with 10 in total. Go to the top. Cold days, unfortunately. By going with the recent actions, it seems that all hopes of the peace with the Ural military district have been dashed. An announcement from the Severodlovsk. The Ural state has claimed that we are an illegitimate state that stands in the way on the path to reunify all of Russia. Following this declaration of hostility, they have expelled all of our citizens without, within their borders. As the military starts to mobilize, the clouds circle on the horizon. It seems that our conflict of interest shall be settled on the battlefield rather than at the negotiating table. Pfft. We're whooping your behind right now. And even though we've lost like 64,000 men, you've lost a quarter million. So don't give me this crap that you guys can keep it up. Because we are just absolutely going to tear up your butts. In a godly way. In a very godly way. Oh, we can do this too. Preparedness to Euro War. Pfft. We don't even have to do that, which is great. I do want to save some political power, though. Because we... Prepare for war. It is 69. Happy 69. Nice. I mean, yeah, we can do that. The Vorkuta Gulags captured. As men swept over the Arctic Plains, infamously dreadful Vorkuta Gulags had come under administration. The dark complex of watchtowers, gloomy barracks, and labor camps strike a trembling fear in, the ice, in these icy waters. The unbelievable torture of the natural prison serves as a reminder of the wickedness of men. The enemy's men lay scattered across the courtyard, buried in debris, and torn to pieces by machine gun fire, with blood freshly painted on dark brick walls. The smell of gunpowder was thick, and silence after battling was deafening. 
We were in a place of immense suffering, and whilst many of our men broke down doors to scurry and rummage for loot, others lowered their weapons to gaze at the daunting sight that dwarfed them. With the gulags allegedly preserved from war, however, the Ziz possessed a question. Do we close the site down forever and let it remain a relic of our barbarous past, or must we plunge our hands in the dirty realities of this war so that Russia may live on? Sometimes great men do awful things, we go to cool logs, we get more research efficiency gain. The last division organization, more recruitable population factor, and ideology of defense goes up. Nice. Very nice. West Russian leaning ceasefire. Pfft. Come on, man. We shall prepare for war, I guess. We we'll give them that. Grand showdown. Uh, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. I mean, we're already at war, so it doesn't matter. No land untouched. We lose monthly population, more factory output, more dockyard output. We get more fuel, which is okay. Cathedrals of industry? Yes, please. If modern industry has a major shortcoming, it is a total absence of religion. When workers are toiling in their hours away, their ears are filled with only the clamor of machinery. As their hands are so occupied with honest work, so too should their ears be open to the holy benedictions and hymns to soothe their spirits and remind them that laboring for the region is a sacred duty. But that's not enough. The arms and equipment churned out by the other factories could be worse. Uh, then useless if they are not adequately blessed. For an army to gain the Lord's favor, their gear must be consecrated in his name, and there's no better place to do this than at the source. By sending a priest to every factory, the proper rites can be conducted and our weapons imbued with divine purpose. God, that sounds amazing. We go on to be singing hymns as we make, you know, equipment? That sounds really cool. Second, oh, Bennett, you want a second term. All quiet in America. See, the reason why they're not winning right now here, it's because they don't believe hard enough in the Lord. You know, they did win, so. That's why. 66, 66, very nice. 10% more soft attack. How many men have we killed? A third of a million. This is because they don't believe in God. Lenin's body captured. Whoa, our soldiers have seized Lenin's mausoleum. Due to the lack of strategic or tactical significance to Lenin's corpse, our troops of our opponent have abandoned his body without a fight, choosing instead to retreat to safer, more defensible positions. The political significance of Lenin's body remains questionable across Russia. Views over Lenin as a historical figure are wide range and buried. Many people view Lenin as a father of a political movement which has, through its stupidity and incompetence, led to the collapse of our nation. Others see Lenin as a bastion of the form of communism true to Marx and Engels, a legacy which would be which would be prepared, betrayed by his heir, Bukharin. Others still see Lenin as a first in line of a succession of troubled yet Still, utopian Bukharinist leaders and thinkers. Whatever the thoughts of, on this man, he is most certainly one of the most prominent leaders in Russian history, and now he is in our grasp. Four decades of history in our hands. New decisions are available. Oh, man, what can we do with his body? That sounds kind of naughty, but hey, you know what? Things happen. At this point, because of the victory, <clears throat> you 20 combat widths shall be converted to 40 combat widths immediately. No longer shall we use stained 40 co 20 combat width divisions, and we should only make one at a time now. And everyone shall train... For the next holy wall. Now we gotta inter integrate places. Oh, we can do this stuff, but we probably shouldn't need. Len Ooh, Lenin's body. The current ruling body party is not Burgundian system. Preserve the revolutionary. Nah, bury the revolutionary. End his cult of personality. Destroy the traitor. Lenin's body destroyed. War sport and political power game for basically a year. Lenin's body destroyed. Well, let's go ahead. I would. Oh, I want to do this stuff, but we gotta integrate places first. Let's do. Sverdlovsk and Omsk. God, I need to place Omsk. Russian reunification. You know what I like to see? I like to see the Holy Russian Empire. Uh, extra influence of Kazakhstan? Oh, we could. Ooh, if we do that. Ooh, do we go to war with these guys then? If that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and do this first. I want extra influence in Kazakhstan immediately. Oh, how do we do this? It has to be 71. We're going to be exerting influence immediately. A am from heaven. Oh! Wait, what? The Holy Russian Empire. We got rid of the other focus tree. No! No, 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 no. Oh, that sucks. The arsenals of Damocles. A mandate from heaven. Just as Israel is granted to the chosen people, God has granted Western Siberia to the Russians. The might of our arms remains unvanquished despite the assaults of hell's minions upon our holy nation. The Lord smiles upon his pious servants, and the mandate expands. But the Lord's blessings are conditionally granted. He will never grant favor to those who shirk their duties or flee from tribulations. Siberia presents a new challenge to us, but it will not be met with uncertainty and fear. It will be met with an iron resolve, unwavering faith, and an edge of the blade. <clears throat> Six hours. We're doing really well. I think we're doing very, very well, actually. Oh my god, 2.9. Oh my goodness. Jesus Christ. Exploitive taxation really hurts us. Minus 50% political power gain. Oh. Actually, how's our GDP doing? 13 billion? Well, that's not good. Go ahead and cut this then. That'll be fine. We must make more factories. Half a million manpower, not bad. An end of wonders, cool. <clears throat> Keep making more of this stuff. Ooh, there you go. There you go. Oh yeah, all this stuff too has to get roads. 
all that stuff. And as well as over here too. Good, 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 good. Cool. So, and then it wonders. We've come far. Where once our government was seen as a mere warlord holding onto a scrap of Russian land, we can now assert ourselves as a proper nation on the world stage, having made it into the final basket of candidates to reunify Russia. Our country can sound proud of its accomplishments and look to the road ahead with determination. This progress has filled our citizens with awe, even as we rebuilt the country, its infrastructures, and its industries. However, our successes have rendered the wonders of the old much less critical to our efforts. Where once holding onto these relics of a happier past gave our government legitimacy and gave our people the tools needed for survival, the wonders under our control are now a tiny portion of our overall assets. They will no doubt continue to inspire our people as they stand as mementos to our warlord era. But the age we are holding onto wonders of was of great importance has come to an end, which we'll get we, we'll do later on. I don't need to worry about that right now. We don't need to worry, really worry about it at all, really. So we must well continue doing this then, because I didn't realize that our focus tree would be switched over. Which really, really is disappointing. I think I did this too fast. Hmm. But oh well. Whatever. So any more tanks. Artillery's looking not too bad. That's not looking too bad. We've got plenty of guns. Motors equipment's looking great. Even Cass is not doing too bad. I made it from heaven. The second cleansing. Oh my goodness. Monthly population goes down by 50%. The war within. <clears throat> the clock slows down. Church opposition. The false shepherds. Rats in the wall. Holy crap. Uh, divine, define subhumanity. No such thing as innocence. <clears throat> Villages of the damned. Oh my goodness. The wages of sin. Define subhumanity. Um, the cleansing of sin. Oh, I'm not going to have any manpower, am I? Uh, fires of redemption. Salvation through sacrifice. Jesus Christ. The war within. <clears throat> Treason, treason is like a tree. Its leaves, green and filled with life, wave gently into the wind and paint an idyllic picture. While beneath its soil, its roots spread like a plague and corrupt all they touch. Even the most pure of Russians is not immune to its vile infection, it seems. They gather in their homes, in the streets, and churches. They blaspheme against the blessed region, decrying him as one as one can scarcely believe it. A tyrant and a heretic. Even our own holy men have been subverted by the Jewry, condemning his eminence as a new Antichus Epiphanes. We know not how our people could be led astray so easily, but the Jewish devilry must be excised at once. Uh, a cold wind in my mind. Taborski stood up upon the summit of Mount Yamantau, gazing down upon the vast forest and sleeps of Siberia beyond it. All of it. Timon, Omsk, Sverdlovsk, it was his. It was God's. From the Ural Mountains to the Taiga bordering central Siberia, the divine rule of the Regency has spread its wings to bathe fully half of Russia in the safety of its shadow. Awareness of his power strengthened him, filling his aging bones with vigor, but he knew the fight was far from over. Order still to be brought to the east, to the shores of Lake Baikal, and then to the Pacific, but a frigid wind swept down from the north, making him shiver despite his great coat. He knew that Siberia held many perils of his own, and purifying it in its entirety would be a challenge far greater than he had faced. Yet, he had to do it. He had to spread God's light to the furthest reaches of Russia. Only when he shone from the desert of Kazakhstan to the frozen north would his rule be secure. Tabrowski blinked away from the sky, and as he began to dance around the horizon, now wasn't the time. He turned and marched back to his helicopter, pondering all the ways in which his new conquest might be best purified. The second trial begins. We must have faith. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, this is going nuts. This is going crazy. Go and integrate these places because we're going to need that manpower. Uh, we will destroy the, bo the body as well, but oh my goodness. Military Oh, we've got to do that too. I'm a little worried about manpower, I'll be honest. Oh, crap. We're still demobilizing. Oh, no, 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 no. I should have not done that stuff so early on. Oh, God. The false shepherds? Might as well. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the utmost state seats in the synagogues and sal salutations in the marketplace. Thus spoke the Lord. With that, we have heeded his words. With that, the clergy had but a single neck so that we might strangle it. The priests and nuns and monks, they had not been so loyal as they dared profess. Their hearts are full of treason, heresy, and sympathy for the Jew. We should have known the depth of their evil when they first balked at our cleansing of holy Russia. What is the price of a priest? How many silver shekels does it cost to turn a holy man against God himself? We'll set this matter right no matter how much of the clerical blood we have to spill to free ourselves from the satanic corruption. Now we're going to be losing... I should have done that one later. I'll be honest. Oh, crap. Oh, my gosh. Oh... I hope at the end of this focus tree we can at least get some more stuff ever onwards. Please let us get some stuff. Get some more stability or something. Oh my goodness, this is not easy. This is, oh my gosh. I should have not done the focus tree yet. Oh god. The Holy Russian Empire is cool, but yeah, Dabby is uh, going is going bonkers. 14. Oh god dang it. Oh man, this is definitely not bueno as some would say. I just want to go to war, man. 
Paul Shepard's, we've got more stability. Rats in the walls. Comparisons to cockroaches, we are most apt to describe some humans recently, considering recent news. We've learned that the Sturmoviki are not quite so capable as a good commander's claim. Countless thousands of Jews, degenerates, traitors, and other vermin have escaped them. Where still, they've been protect protected by our own supposedly loyal brothers of the pure race. It defies belief that the region's own people, God's chosen race, are so thoroughly corrupted. Is this, too, the doing of Lucifer? What other explanation could there be? The region is incapable of error. Whatever the reason, we must meet this challenge with a sword in hand, executing the line Sturmoviki, redoubling our efforts, and met out the swift, deadly justice to every Jew sympathizer we find. Oh, there's more map. We get political power, but... Jud Judas Priest. Oh, crap. I knew it! Taborski screamed. He hurled his wine glass against the wall where it shattered into a thousand tiny shards. Pharisaical traitors, Marxist rats. Rats! Impotently, raging with his, within his office, Taborski could feel his blood vessels bulging in his forehead. Snakes, devils, you you Jew-loving scum! He urged to seize the pistol, storming out of the palace and shoot dead. The first priest he saw was overwhelming, but he gritted his teeth and clenched his fists, trying to force the anger down to a simmer. Betrayal, again. He'd seen it coming months ago. He knew that he could never trust the clergy who constantly held and questioned his divine power. That was a Jewish way, wasn't it? Questioning after question after question. <clears throat> Question everything, spit on holiness without ever trusting in the faith so they so readily espoused. Well, he had a solution for this. The church needed a new St. Peter, a great leader to show the way and slice away the fat until only the flesh and blood of true believers remained. He showed them those actions of Lucifer, pr Prince of Lies, a damned priest, snatching up his journal and sitting down cross-legged before the earth. He began scrawling out a new decree. Henceforth, all clergy of the Russian Orthodox Church, traitors, sons of Cain, protectors of the wicked. Oh, crap. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. <sighs> we actually quite a few factories... Hmm. Let's keep building up some more civilian factories. That'd be good. Cause we're still—I mean, militarily we're doing great. I mean, we're doing pretty darn well, I'd say. But with the way Tab is going, I'm not sure if we're going to actually end up going anywhere good. But I do hope we can find um, Alexi. Alexi, where are you? We need you. Tabby needs you. Everyone needs you at this point. <laughs> A little bit of lag. I, I hope to God that you guys sort yourself out here, guys. Please. For the love of God, please. Because we need to reunify as fast as possible. Oh, God. Because we are... We still have a good amount of stability, though. <clears throat> the purity order. Okay, get more political power. Okay, cool. The church can never can be trusted. Even bishops and grandmasters are turned to treason by Jewish gold and Satan's promises of power. There's only one solution to turn back the clock to demolish the rotten structure to burn it all down. The blessed region will be as a new St. Peter, the rock upon which a new pure church is built. The first step in the process is to ensure the loyalty of our holy men so that there's no need for another great purge. All that is needed for this is for a few good men, drawn from the most loyal, the Sturmoviki. This purity order will carry out the inspections, provide guidance to local priests, and ensure its mandatory church attendance. The truth faith is not yet lost. More political power gain, and more political power, we lose stability, and we- Okay, we get more weekly stability. Oh, thank, thank goodness. I'm glad I read that. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. Uh, let's get Forkuda next. Oh, Jesus. Save Russia's soul. Actually, uh, just, I, just, I want to go to war with the Kazakhs. Why? Wait, what do we have? Oh, there it is. Military intervention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, our guys are very strong. Tough, I'll say. Especially with uh, enough fighters here. Oh, yeah. Interceptors, too. Eh, it's kind of a waste, but whatever. Hey, there goes those guys. Yeah, I really should not have done stuff too early. Because we could have had more options to see what would have happened, but whatever. Villages of the Damned? I don't want to do that. Uh, no such thing as innocence. Oh, boy. Among the region's blessings is a fraction of the Lord's omniscience. He knows that the hearts of men imparts this knowledge to the chosen servants. Nobody brought before the imperial courts as free as sin. They are with wreathed in treachery, heresy flowing in their blood. A plea of innocence in our courts is therefore guilty of wasting our time, along with whatever offenses the defendant has committed. There's no need for due process when our judicial system is directly guided by God himself. Cool. And what is this? Just a nuclear program? New connections? Oh, that's not bad. Supply consumption does go up, though. Well, a lot of attack and defense on core territory. The spark, which is not bad. Skyward swords? What does that one do? Support artillery bonuses. Cool. No lives wasted. Cruel sort of alchemy. Sacrificial lambs. Successful launch. Heaven's light. Our enemies will be swept away by our divine radiance. Ooh. Cool. Better guns for the god. Advanced infantry rifles. Don't mind if we do. 14 billion. Is that all? No such thing as innocence. Due process. Uh, we'll do that. Wages of sin. This clock speeds up. Let's do a second cleansing first. Oh my gosh. Monthly population minus 50%. Recruited popu population factor minus 10%. Beyond the Urals, countless degenerates found shelter amongst criminals, reds, devils, worshippers, and masterless 
Soldiers and subhumans blend in rather well, but they cannot hide from the faithful. It will take much time and effort. But God is on our side. The mountains and forests will offer no refuge. Pure-hearted Siberians, once their faith is renewed, will surely join us in the pursuit of the enemy. We shall achieve what the Israelis could not, and cleanse the promised land in its entirety. Due process, sentences were harsh and swift. Death! roared the judge, appointed personally by the regent. Death! 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 Such was every sentence as that of fateful morning decrees. Theft! Death! Murder! Death! Deviancy! Defeatism! Indolence! Death! The butchery was beyond imagining. Prisoners and camp inmates were shipped to makeshift courts by the truckload, all fitted for the same sentence and the same end. First, there was a single mass grave outside the capital, then two, then three. By the week's end, thousands were dead. The execution ground soaked through with blood. Shturmoviki began to request breaks on the second day, but there was no such thing as transfer in their unit. The regent, they were told, was seeing his, this whole bloody affair through personally, so it was only fitting for the soldiers to follow suit. So it was that with questions began, worrying, treasonous questions, and the sentence for treason, death. The bodies continued to pile up, more mass graves were dug, and the regent's fear was unending. Mercy is for God and God alone. Jesus Christ. Um, before we lose political power, I'm going to go ahead and core more stuff. Jeez. Hey, good. On Orochia. Wait. On... And Noble Severe Skin. Okay, these guys are going to kill each other. Cool. You process? Uh, no, no, no. 0.47, that's a lot better than it was before. Oh my goodness. Hey, we actually have a uh, free dockyard. Convoys, it is. So, it'll be us. <laughs> the, the Burgundian System Tabby versus Yagoda. I can't believe Yagoda won. Authoritarian Socialism. Hopefully this weakens him quite a bit. And we can attack him as soon as he's done. Cool, it's the second cleansing. I don't want to do this yet, because I really don't want to hurt ourselves too much. I kind of want to do that, but whatever. The caucus and method? Yes. Thus far, we've utilized conventional means of de decontamination. Guns, knives, gas, and so on. Unfortunately, none of these are particularly efficient. It takes hours of work to clear a village of undesirables, especially if they have taken measures to conceal themselves. But perhaps there is an alternative. A better way, one that has the same outcome, but with the added benefit of bolstering the output of our arms, our farms, factories, and mines. The life of a degenerate is worthless, but his labor might not be. Wow, we have 200 factories. That's quite a bit, I'd say. Quite a bit. And we're done making military factories. Can I make a nuclear reactor? You know what? We're going to make a nuclear reactor because we can. 80%, 90%, 100%. There we go. Military austerity? Nope. Goodbye. The journal entry. Treat not a, treat not with a man without religion concerning holiness. Ooh, talks begin. Cool. Nor with an unjust man concerning justice, nor with a woman touching... Her of whom she is jealous, nor with a coward concerning war, nor with a merchant about traffic, nor with a buyer selling, nor with an envious man of giving thanks. Sirach 37.12 The allure of freedom is the most wicked and insidious thing. My own people, the pure race, see the degeneracy and prolificacy of the West and think it is virtuous. We look at bourgeois Americans and see a liberate and prosperous people. How can they be so blind? How can they fail to see the golden strings upon which the elders of Zion make them dance? And then they talk of social mobility. The very thing that which sparked the downfall of the empire. Was it not the promises of rising to power that the Bolsheviks seduced the workers? Was it not to the nascent middle class that the backs ever Kerensky ap appealed? Everyone has their place. It has that, been that way for thousands of years, not long before Russia ever united. The Jews' constant attempts to break down the fabric of society to force the lambs to lie down with the lions has always been the primacy, primary means of undermining civilization. Am I the only one in all creation who understands that? Even the Germans, virtuous as they are, have the order of their nation in disarray. Where is their Kaiser, their nobility? Gone in the favor of a class of bureaucrats and party men. I will not allow this fate to befall holy Russia. Peasants, warriors, nobles, the monarch. That is the correct structure of any pure nation. If it works, why change it? 0.78, not bad. In which I will in integrate Tuyman and then go to war with Kazakhstan. But oh my goodness. Whew, this is going a bit nuts. And then we shall do divine subhumanity. We have, since our rise to power, relied only on the direct commands of the regent and a crusade against impurity. The majority of our policies with regards to subhumans are informal, based on old maxim from the days when our army was merely paramilitary. This is... Not the most efficient system. The region has been informed of the difficulties that these circumstances have been imposed upon us, and it's Grishin of the Sleeves declared that he shall remedy it immediately. The divine codex of racial purity, as he has dubbed his divine work, shall show God's chosen people the way to heaven. The finer details. Good, good, good. The broken cross, huh? At least we have 100% stability. Hey, we've got another tank. Great. Wonderful. That does increase military costs, but I don't really care. And we're doing pretty darn well, I'd say. Yemen declared one. Yemen, good job, Yemen. Divine subhumanity. Chemical terror bombings. Oh, crap. We get a lot less agricultural production. Many of the region's subjects still resent the Germans for the constant bombing raids on our homeland. Of course, this cannot be blamed on the Germans. Had the people of Russia shown more faith in God and dedicated themselves to the region earlier, perhaps you would have seen it fit to spare them from suffering. As always, the blessed region has a more nuanced understanding of the matter. The bombings may have been intended to bring Russia. My bad. Oh, there's a lot of auto-saving and stuff like that. 
uh, uh, bring the Russians back to God, but those already enlightened, they were intended to inspire. The latest jet bombers carrying out blessed purification for miles above the civil earth, such as the fusion of German tactics and Russian piety. No disloyal village or polluted city in all Siberia is beyond the reach of our sacred arms. Crap, that is not good for us. Go ahead and integrate these guys, because we're going to need as much manpower as possible. We're still demobilizing. The finer details. The regent growled in frustration and scrunched up another rough draft before tossing it into the bend beside his desk. He fumed silently as he fetched another piece of paper and slumped back into his chair, pen at the ready for when inspiration struck. Details, details, details. He loathed this sort of drudgery, but he knew it would be necessary. He knew subhumans on sight, of course. The telltale signs were present in their eyes, in their manner, in the way they moved, but another, other men, lesser men, were blind compared to him. Barring obvious physical features, there was no way for them to spot infiltrators in their midst. No doubt, some were happy to be so naturally ignorant, since it meant less work for them to do so. He had to see to that, as well reinstate flogging, perhaps. The Jews most easily recognizable by his physical features. He began muttering as he wrote, These include the, large, the following, a large hooked nose, curly hair, a swarthy countenance, dark eyes, compulsive behavior in the presence of gold, and so on. An hour later, Tabrowski's work was done. The first chapter of the Imperial Codex of Racial Purity is complete. Now, he muttered, where to begin with the Tartars? A great educator, our regent. <laughs> okay, sure, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think we could probably all agree that Tabby, even though he's a man of God, Things are going a bit, uh, nuts in his mind. I hope he doesn't hear that, though. I don't want to be sent to the gulags. Anti-tank equipment is still not doing great. Holy crap. And then again, we're not really making any more military factories, so that makes sense. And then, cleanliness is godliness. Yes! <clears throat> The poor of Russia are not the poor of which Jesus Christ spoke of. The true poor are those who are of the pure race, but devoid of all that such a status deserves. Christ would approve of what we are about to do to the unwashed masses who solely our streets. The truth is, as elucidated by the Blessed Regent, is that the poor are merely degenerate beasts who have escaped judgment for far too long. What explanation for the supposed blight can there be besides impiety or Jewish subversion? The Regent knows exactly what must be done. The same as with the other verminous scum that threaten the sanctity of the Empire. Oh, agricultural mechanism. Oh, crap. Oh, we're only at point five now. But we do have mass mechanization, so that's not too bad. <clears throat> not too bad. Cool. Get point seven eight. Not bad. <clears throat> the seventh hour slowly slipping forwards. The sun, morning sun dances amongst the heavens. Cool. And then, fires of redemption. In terms of crimes against God and empire, there are so few heinous as blasphemy. Thus said, saith the Lord. Every sin of blasphemy shall be forgiven men, but the blasphemy of the spirit shall not be forgiven. In times past, all God-fearing Russians knew the correct punishment for this gravest of sins. When the faith began to waver with the arrival of the degenerate modernity, they foolishly abandoned it, refusing to harden their, their uh, hearts even in the face of the blackest sin. The region has decreed that we shall tolerate the evils of blasphemy no longer. The appropriate punishment will be reintroduced immediately. A union. Ooh, okay, there you go. And then uh, we, thus, we do, do we glorify the Lord. Political power, great, to ashes. Oh. Oh boy. Man's greatest affliction. And we'll read that once we get through this one. 69, nice. So, hey you, barked a commanding voice from behind Samuel. Stop where you are. He complied, hands shotting up in the air. Instinctively, a wise decision, as he also heard the clack of a rifle being cocked. A uniformed soldier stepped in, uh, in front of him, face covered by a block, balaclava. Only his eyes, divided of pity, shone out from amongst the black wool. They tracked up, up and down, taking in the sight of Samuel's Filthy, mattered beard and ragged clothing. Homeless came the question, dripping with judgment and disdain. Yes, sir, Samuel said timidly. What did these men want with him? He wasn't a red Jew or whatever. He was just trying to survive on the streets of Siktivkar. The soldier put out, produced a pair of handcuffs. Hands out, you're under arrest. Samuel could only stammer protest as his hands were drawn behind him, his back and cuffed. The cold steel was poorly forged and was too tight around his wrists. What have I done? Oh, please, sir, I'm just a, a vagrant, sneered the soldier. What? You haven't been paying attention to the decree that has gone up over the city? He clipped Samuel by the ear, knocking him to the ground. You blind or something? Answer me, you F. He swift kicked to the gut followed, and the old man curled up, sobbing quietly. Private, get this piece of crap to the truck. Shoot him if he tries to run. I'm going to see if he's got any friends hiding around here. What decree? I can't even read. Oh, crap. That's not good. Poverty rate. That's something I wanted to improve the entire time, man. Oh, that actually will go down, so I'm not going to touch that one yet. Yep. Nope. 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 Can't force me to touch it. No, no, no. You can't force me. Do that one there because of infrastructure. Oh, yeah, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, and then do that one there. Go. Very good. Wow. Minus 80, minus 53% construction speed. Jesus Christ. Exploited taxation, four year draft, rudimentary manufacturing lines, 25 to 50% poverty rate. My goodness. <gasps> yes. But we are done training. Maybe going to war with Kazakhstan will be okay. And more divisions? Don't mind if we do. They will not be ready for our holy war. 
to ashes. Heretics and blasphemous or oh, blasphemers can no longer offer excuses for the crimes. Shouted the Shimoviki sergeant, pacing back and forth on the stage erected in the town square. He carried a lit torch in his hand. To pardon them is only further shroud humanity's light with the darkness of their souls. For these wretches, death alone cannot suffice to extinguish the evil. It must also serve to purify the souls of the faithful and thereby wither the weeds of deviancy that have sprouted in their midst. For him stood a stake, some eight feet tall. Tied to it with firewood piled around his legs was the town's esteemed priest, Father Tickhorn. Hear me, he cried out, blood trickling through his thick brown beard. The regent is a true blasphemer. He is a murderer, a traitor to God in Russia. Please, my brothers and sisters, find the courage to rise up, cast down the tyrant. Their hate can never overcome Christ's love. Silence, roared the sergeant, eyes bloodshot and bulging with fanatical rage. Heretic Tikhon, for the crimes of blasphemy against God and his blessed regent, I consign you to flames. Hail fire, take you, sinner. With that, he cast the torch into the oil doused tinder, and with seconds the priest was engulfed in flame. For all of his wisdom, all of his love of his people, all of his courage and tenderness, Father Tikhon died screaming with a raging fire, the spark of his defiance smothered forever. Let burning heretics light our way to heaven. Salvation through sacrifice. Oh, crap. Oh, we, 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 even, do we have any monthly population? Holy Russia faces a threat like no other. For untold centuries, a subhuman menace has gnawed at the foundations of our godly civilization. Jews corrupted minds. Tartars slaughtered our people, and the Mong Malorisi betrayed us to the enemy every chance they get. Their infestation runs deep, like a cancerous high. Bolsheviks and liberals think of them indispensable to Russia, and they constantly seek to integrate or ingratiate themselves, offering a hand open in friendship with the others, concealing a knife behind their back. They provocated against the pure race for so long that they often seem indistinguishable from us. A lesser man might despair at the situation, but not the region. For God himself speaks to him, and has revealed the truth, that no innocent life lost in the purity of purity, pursuit of purity, will be in vain. Facing uncertainty, kill them all. God will know his own. Um, okay, so... We're going to do one more focus, because I know this video has gone on pretty much for an hour long right now. We're going to do one more focus, and then we'll call it an episode. We are at the seventh hour still, which is totally fine. Weaponry, we're doing great. I mean, maybe not anti-tank and tanks, but hey, that's okay. Yeah, I, I definitely made the mistake of going through the focuses a little bit too fast, because we were doing really well. And now we have to wait for these guys to kill each other off, so... Yeah, I wanted to see what else there was, but I was... I was worried about the clock, so... These guys will kill each other off eventually, hopefully... We still need to destroy the traitor's body, so... We got something to look forward to, I guess we'll say. Lennon's body destroyed. A better research facility. Hey! Even when times like this, we still have better research facilities. The money keeps on rolling in, and our scientists are loving it. With the budget of a research and development program now skyrocketing, we've built new research facilities and upgraded our old laboratories. This won't just allow us to be safer when working, but handle more dangerous materials and ensure greater amounts of research to be done. Across the private and public sector, new technologies from civilian to military uses are being developed, of course. This is good for more than just scientists. Now citizens will be able to enjoy the boon of research and economic bonuses like new industrial technology to keep the economy moving. We'll get back to this... Uh, even more lag. Cool. To, back to schools eventually. Under Tabriski, we have upgraded facilities, which is awesome. Look at that. Modern research facilities. God wanted this. And we should do Villages of the Dam. God dang it. The traditional hierarchy of the Apostolic Church has been tested and found wanting. The bishops who professed loyalty to the Breast and Regent were traitors to the man, secretly working to hollow out the foundations of a reborn empire. The serpentine spirit of Satan lurks in their hearts. There is only one possible cure for such wickedness. To fill the void left by a righteous cleansing, we shall have to elevate new pure-hearted men in the bishop's sta stead. With the church so thoroughly corrupt that we cannot trust any man of the cloth, no matter how lowly. Only the region's hand-picking or hand-picked subjects are worthy of bearing the irresponsibility of shepherding the Lord's flock. His word is God's word, and God knows what is best for his church. But unfortunately, that will end or conclude today's episode. I have a good feeling that tomorrow's video will be the final video in this campaign because, well, we pretty much will have only one enemy to deal with. But I hope you enjoyed this crazy wild ride we're currently on. If you enjoyed it, though, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will go to war with the Republic of Kazakhstan and probably eventually fight the Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic. Thanks for watching, and you have a great, great rest of your day.